uh, how much have your duties changed with, with the promotion or with Steve coming in? Have they stayed relatively the same? Um, it's a little bit different, but for the most part, it's the same. You know, when Corey Allen was working with me, we both shared the room. It was two voices in the meeting room. Now it's more of a one voice. But having Steve Wilkes, having that background as a defensive back coach, he's been helping out a whole lot. He's been in every meeting. He's been in every drill on the field, which has been very helpful as well. With the Jaguar, obviously, you want to have a to play and compete as soon as possible, but you also have Tayshawn in front of him. It, you kind of, with, with Ufanga, you were able to kind of, you know, ease him in and, and let him learn behind Jaquaski. How, how do you kind of go about, you know, when you got a young guy come in behind a veteran and, you know, preparing them in case they're needed now, but also thinking long term? First, it's awesome to have a vet, you know, saying I got it with starter experience and know how to play the game, especially like Tayshawn. Uh, Gibson, you know, I think this is 12th year coming up. Um, he's been an all-pro safety. Um, he's know how to he know how to do it and play at a high level. He know how to take care of his body. Um, you can tell, but the difference with him playing with uh, Telenoa Fong, you can tell that how close they was from a communication standpoint on the football field that Huff had grown as a football player. Now when you're looking at Tayshawn Gibson, I'm telling Jair, hey, I want you to stay in both of those guys' hip pocket and learn from those guys physically and mentally as well. And looking at Tayshawn, like he does a good job taking those under guy, taking those younger guys up on his wing and coaching them up. So really Tayshawn, he, he's a coach on the field and just to have a player like that to be a coach on the field because I might not always be there. You know what I'm saying? That helps a lot. How did that work for, for Talanoa with, with Jaquaski and Jimmy a couple years ago? I mean, just from a learning standpoint, just learning from those guys, you know, learning what to do and what not to do, you know, and just having uh, Jimmy Ward and, and Jaquaski Tart, both of them guys play at a high level to take the position, but it allows him to play faster as well when he picking a grant picking a brain when he's on the sideline, hey, Jimmy, what you seeing right here versus this formation, any split issue, any indicator where he can play faster, just taking that knowledge and utilizing that, that knowledge on the field between I'm, plays. I'm sure you're never telling these young guys, like, hey, you're going to have to wait your turn. You want them to, to, to compete, right? How do you how do you kind of strike the balance there? Uh, first thing first, you know, for all my players, I want them to have the mindset that they want to compete to start. You know, they're going to be given every opportunity to start. It's on them to take the job at the end of the day, but at the same time, we want them to do their job. So my biggest thing, especially for the young guys, I want them to own own their role. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, do their job first. At the end of the day, where it's communicating, where it's executing, going to get the football. Once they understand that, now, you know what I'm saying, now they're in a position where they compete for the starting job. But if they don't know how to play the position, then they can't compete for the starting job. How do you know when they're ready? Um, time will tell. <laughs> <laughs> Lane Hufanga came in last year ready and he came, had a good start, made all pro. Where does he need to get better at? Um, just utilizing his weapons. You know, the biggest thing with Steve Woods coming in, we talk about utilizing our weapons as a defense. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing that what are our weapons? Our weapons are our eyes, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, hands, hips, and feet. Every defensive player is going to utilize those weapons on every single play. So when you look at Telenor Fung, who played at a high level last year, he did give up some plays as well, explosive sure. plays. But you can identify what was the issue. And the issue was, I guarantee you, is from utilizing those weapons, where it's playing with poor eyes. And you hear me always say, poor eyes equals poor technique. Yeah. Or whereas using my hands when I'm taking on blocks. You know, using my hips, getting in and out of breaks and man coverage. I have a similar question for Diamond Lenor, who even came in in week five and got better and better as the season went on. What does he need to do to take it to the next level this year? I'm just being, being consistent. You know, he finished off strong last year. We definitely know he had the two picks in the playoff game, but this offseason, he's having a great offseason. But my biggest thing with him is just being consistent day in, day out, getting better every single day and competing against himself. He's always been pretty aggressive in his two years. I mean, is that a fair point? Yeah, he's an aggressive <laughs> player by nature, which we do love that, especially yeah. being on the defense side of the ball. Yeah. Drake, just, you know, going back to his, to his past growing up, he was – the best AAU players out there, five-star recruit, goes to USC, one of the better players there. Seriously doubt that um, anyone ever, you know, he ever got uh, told that he wasn't good enough to be on the field. So he's, you know, probably always been on the field. And then towards the end of the year, you know, when uh, strength le levels kind of uh, went down and um, got deactivated, I'm sure it was a humbling, you know, experience for him. He took it the right way. Um, but, you know, the NFL is a humbling game. And if you haven't been humbled um, yet, you better be looking around the corner because it's coming sooner or later. Uh, no matter if you're the best in the business or trying to fight your way as an undrafted free agent, it's, it's a humbling game. So uh, sometimes it takes, you know, humbling experience to, you know, really see that um, you, need, you need to put your best foot forward and uh, improve on the things that you need to improve on to, 
you know, be the player that you know you can be and envision yourself being. Can you see when a young player like that mentally accepts what is in front of him, the challenges? Yeah, I mean, I just want to be real with you, you know, with Drake, um, we sat down at the end of the year and I kind of explained to him where I kind of thought he was and I wanted his feedback on where he thought that he was and I asked him for a date and I was hoping that date wasn't going to be April 15th when everybody else showed up. So he gave me a date that was way in advance of that, um, you know, somewhat shortly after the NFC Championship game. Um, and then it's just a matter of, you know, words are easy to say. Um, you got to follow those words with action. So I just told him, all right, Drake, we'll see you on that day. And I got to get to the point to where I hit that start button in my truck in the morning and I'm heading to work. It shouldn't be, well, I hope Drake's in there working hard. It should just be, I know he's in there working hard. And over time, over, you know, from the date that he got back until now, um, be honest with you, I really don't even worry about it in, at all anymore. I know he's putting in the work. I think he's broken through barriers. Um, that maybe he never has had to push himself through uh, previously because he's like, you know, as I mentioned before, Drake's always been the most athletic, the most gifted, and um, he really had to dig within, you know, within himself this offseason to, you know, figure out, hey, what do I want to do? Uh, do I want to go take this thing to the next level or do I just want to be, you know, similar to what I was? And um, he's really put in the work. Um, I don't. I don't worry about when I start that truck up in the morning if he's going to be here working. He's going to be here. He's proven that, you know, over over time. It can't just be a one deal, one one day deal, one week deal. It's got to be consistency over an extended period of time, and he's done a great job with it so far. When Kyle and John have both said that the defensive line they thought was still very good last year, but maybe not to the levels of you know 2019 when you guys were as dominant as you were, and then you, you go out and get Javon Hargrave. How how does he get you back to to where you want to be? What, is, what does he bring to the table that allows you to do that? It just just one more piece of the puzzle, um, a very talented piece of the puzzle. Obviously, um, the last couple of years, you know, he said I've followed uh, Javon throughout his career, and he's always been a, a really, really, really good player. And I think the last couple years in Philly, he's really separated himself from a lot of the, you know, the other interior players in the game, especially from a pass rush uh, standpoint, you know, from pressuring the quarterback to being able to win one-on-ones at a really, really high rate. There's only a couple guys, you know, in the NFL that's won at a rate that, that he's won. So, um, you know, everybody, you know, knows our philosophy on D Lyman here with the Niners, you know, the more the merrier, and especially the, you know, talented uh, more is even better. So, you know, we saw the opportunity. Uh, we didn't know that we were, you know, if we were going to be able to get him or not, and it came down to it. And this is a place that, you know, he saw himself wanting to play at and uh, style of play that uh, he said, seen himself fitting in with, with what we do. Uh, Add another really talented uh, piece to the puzzle, you know, to help us, um, you know, reach those goals that we, you know, aspire to reach uh, once it's all said and done. What's it like for you as a physical D-line coach to know that not only is the organization so committed to, to giving you, you know, getting you talented guys, but also knowing guys want to come play for you? Uh, it's, it's it's nice, you know. I think, um, you know, they just I think all D-linemen in, in general, for, for the most part, want to be able to play fast and, and uh, play free out there and, you know, be able to, utilize their skill sets, um, you know, to a degree, you know, in our scheme that maybe other schemes may not quite turn them loose the way we do, might not want them to get off the, the football the way we do and play with the, you know, the attacking nature. And then, you know, and they, when we look at passing situations, the way we rush for and, you know, utilize some of our linebackers with five-man pressures, you know, that's enticing, um, I would say, to defensive linemen across the NFL. Um, to be able to play in an attacking scheme and not um, have to sit there and read offensive linemen and, and, and play slow early in the down and then, you know, have to play on the line of scrimmage all day. Um, I think it's, you know, it's, it's good to know that guys want to come here and um, be a part of this and um, hopefully they we get more guys in the future. Well, is he a guy you pitched or did he did the Panapas? So say that again? Is he a guy that you pitched to them or? How did that um, kind of come to be? In free agency, you know, we start with a big list. Um, you know, they probably give us the list, you know, a month before we actually uh, do our evaluations on them. And we kind of stop, start from the top and work our way down. And, you know, yeah, ideally we would like to get 
this guy. You know, uh, there's a lot of moving pieces in there between, you know, John and Kyle and Prague and the whole salary cap that I don't even want to even think about. <laughs> um, I give my opinion on the on the skill set of the player, try to find out um, as much about the human being, the type of person, because, you know, John and Kyle and all the way up to the top through, you know, the ownership with Jed and Dr. York want to bring, you know, good people in here. So we try to find as much, of, of, you know, about the person as we can. And um, then then his role within, you know, how he's going to fit with his role within the, the, the team and the, especially <coughs> for the D-lineman, what's his role going to be within the D-line. And then after that, you know, it's kind of uh, we, we go through whatever, you know, 15 to 25 free agents and um, Prague in the front office does their work and kind of figures out whether it can fit in or not. And I just keep my fingers crossed and hope that it can. It's the third uh, third different coordinator you've worked with here. What's been your observation of Coach Wilkes so far and working with him? Oh, he's, he's been great. Um, you know, I think um, – Every one of them, you know, going from uh, Sala was different than uh, than D'Amico. And, you know, when we hired D'Amico, I was hoping it wouldn't, you know, D'Amico wasn't going to try to be a clone of Sala. I was hoping D'Amico would be the person that I knew and be his own man. Um, bringing Steve in here, it's it's been awesome. He's been great to work with. Um, one thing I just, I feel like we see the uh, game through a similar lens, you know, when it comes from, uh, you know, which starts up front and uh, the way he, you know, envisions a D-line playing and then um, all the way, you know, front and coverage and the way he sees the game is very similar to the way I see the game. And, you know, just over the last, whatever, five months that uh, he's been here, uh, I've really enjoyed it. He's his own man. He's not going to try to come in here and be D'Amico Rhymes or Robert Sala. He's going to be Steve Wilkes and he's going to ha- add his personality um, into the defense and, you know, the tweaks that he wants to, you know, uh, implement within the scheme. You know, you'll see small tweaks that uh, that he's going to implement. He's been, you know, obviously a uh, renowned defensive coach and worked uh, really, really, really well with in the, in the defensive backfield for years and years, known as one of the best in the game. So uh, really, really excited to continue to work with him. It's been great so far. Do you ever have designs on being a, a coordinator yourself? Or are you more like when Bob McKittrick was here? He turned down chances to be an offensive coordinator elsewhere because he just wanted to work with the offensive line. Yeah, I just I love coaching guys with their hand in the ground. Yeah. How different was this whole process since you brought in Steve from outside? With with Danico, obviously, it was an internal hire. Were you part of the, yeah, I guess, interview process here? And, and what was that acclimatization period like? Um, I wouldn't say I was necessarily a part of the uh, the interview as far as like um, you know the X's and O's and, and the behind the closed doors uh, that Steve had with um, with Colin John uh, the meat and the potatoes of the interview basically I was um, my my part of it was really just to get to know Steve as a person and you know and kind of the you know bouncing philosophies off one another and just seeing how it would mesh and um, you know, the little bit of time that I did get to spend with him, you know, prior to him getting hired, I could tell um, that our philosophies, we saw the game very similar um, from what, you know, the way a defense operates. Um, and, uh, you know, and then little did I know that uh, Steve's two of my really close mentors um, throughout, you know, my, my time in the, in the game of football is two guys that Steve knows real well. So it kind of, uh, you know, uh, was instrument. Both of the guys were instrumental in you know his growth as a young coach coming in, kind of similar to the way they were for me. So it's kind of a, a really good match, um, and it's been great so far. I mean, I've really, really enjoyed working with him. Really um, intelligent guy, understands people well, uh, understands how to get his message across well. Um, you know, similar to, to Sala and D'Amico in that aspect, I thought both of them were really great at, at those two things that they just said. But Steve's his own person, and he's going to do it with his own personality and philosophies and stuff like that. So it's been great. Who are those two mentors? Uh, Jim Washburn and Ruffin McNeil. Is Javon Kinlaw looking healthier now than he did at this time last year? Um, this is the first off season since we've had Javon that he's been able to start the off season healthy and actually stack days on top of each other and we've been going for a while now and, and he's been uh continuously stacking days you know if you just go back to his 
his um, career, his, his rookie year was a coronavirus year where we didn't, I didn't see him till the first day of camp shows up and he, you know, he tries to, as a rookie, come in with really no off season and go through a camp. His um, brain was spinning and um, just trying to learn the defense and all that stuff. And then, you know, he got hurt uh, late his rookie year and it kind of went into the next off season where he was rehabbing. And then, you know, the, the next year he had the, the um, surgery and uh, so he was rehabbing all last off season. So this is really the first off season since we've had him that it's been a, gr a great, unbelievable start and uh, with no setbacks. And he's been doing awesome, been able to stack one day on top of the next and really get himself at this point in time in the off season, more so ready to play than at any time in his career since he's been here. So it's uh, all been really positive, looking forward to it. You mentioned guys uh, wanting to come here largely because they like the idea of having playing a little, little more freedom and things like that. You've had success with guys who, you know, maybe for whatever reason haven't had as much success in other stops along the way. What are you looking for? Uh, you know, guys like Arden Key, you know, you've Cleland Furrow coming now. Like, what are you looking for in, in guys who you know, may not be the Javon Hargraves where you know what you're getting, but you think you can get them to another level? Um, really, it all starts with my kind of my evaluation of them coming out of college. Like, um, if I really liked a guy coming out of college, I had a high grade on him. I thought he was really, could, you know, could fit into our scheme from a from a skill set standpoint. Um, and then for some reason we weren't able to draft him. You know, I just kind of keep I keep my eye on those guys. And if for some reason it doesn't work out somewhere else, I'm always got my eye on him. I, you know, we watch crossover film during the off season. You know, I watch other defenses play, other defensive lines play, and. Um, just kind of see if, you know, if maybe our scheme could just um, help this guy a little bit, you know, and uh, find out about the person, you know, why hasn't it exactly worked out the way they wanted it, you know, in other place. Whereas if we get him here and uh, get him into what we're doing, could it, you know, help him take the next step of where he's trying to go? Um, that's the initial part of it. And then, the, you know, the second part of it's actually getting him here, building a relationship. Um, grinding through, you know, days to, to help them continuously get better and then uh, look for guys that have a lot of passion to get better. And then, um, you know, when they're coming here, I have a lot of passion to help guys get better. Um, so just kind of uh, the collection of all that stuff kind of starts in college, goes through his, his career in the NFL, what he's done in the NFL, the tape that he's put out there, what's caused him to, you know, not – quite be what he wants to be and why he may be available and can we help him. Uh, does the skill set still translate like I, maybe I saw in college? And uh, been fortunate over 15 years to hit on some guys like that going way back to even 2010, you know, th throughout my career. You know, in Detroit we brought guys in very similar to some of the guys here. Um, then the guys here that we've brought in from other places that have somewhat flourished and been able to get stuff on track. It's um, you know they got to have the skill set to play first. You know we're just we're not just out there looking for anybody that's on the open market. We're looking for specific skill sets that can play within the realm of what we're trying to get done. I like guys that love their job and work hard and positive and can bring energy every day. You know, good or bad. That, I always tell guys in games, you go have some bad plays in the game, but can you bounce back the next play and it kind of goes with life, you know. You can you can have a bad day in life, but can you bounce back? And that's and I guys kind of thrive on that. That uh, everybody can do it for two, three weeks, month here and there. Can everybody do it for 12 months? And and our guys every day, you know, in the meeting room, they're the best they could be, and on the field, walk through, and uh, so the culture is kind of set, and our guys really set to culture our players that you know how we go operate. They wanted to consider themselves as the best linebacker group in the world about three years ago, and you know, I was telling us a tough task. And and uh, if you consider yourself that, it got to show not just on Sundays; it got to show every day. And those guys willing to work every day, man. And they are the, the hardest working linebacker group or that I've been around. And they they love coaching. They love to get better, and they. They accept challenges every day to make themselves better, and so fun group to coach. And I'm I always tell them I'm blessed and fortunate to be to coach a group like this. 
the evolution of the linebacker position. I think the 49ers have been on the cutting edge of it. It used to be, you know, Matt Millen and yeah. the full four nine and the yeah. neck roll and the whole thing. Now it's like if you're not running four five or maybe even <laughs> sub four five, you're going to be isolated in space against an athlete and and you're probably coming off the field. <laughs> Talk a little bit about the speed element of the game and how it's really had a huge impact on the evolution of the linebacker position in the NFL. Yeah, and I, I think just probably over the last seven, eight, ten years that it's changed a lot. It's more passing league now, uh, more quarterbacks in a shotgun, and and uh, so all that down here running through gaps, two gapping, uh, it's changed. You know, I remember when I first started coaching, it was big, two gap shed, get off blocks, and you got to be 245 pounds, and those guys are almost like fullbacks. Nobody need them anymore. Not many teams need them. And I know just for our system that, you know, we, we need athletic linebackers that can play in space and they're more uh, convert guys that have been safeties or secondary players in high school and college and that's coming in and playing linebacker for us. But, uh, you know, the skill set is definitely different. Uh, and guys, you have to be able to play in the box and tackle and shed and get off blocks and and uh, so quickness, speed, hands, eyes, you know, it's all uh, part of development for him. Sounds like Marshley on the carry ball fits all that with what you guys brought in a speedy guy that needs to learn how to play all the different positions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How has he come along? He's, he's like learning under Fred. Yeah, he's he's been a a sponge, like. From day one, he sat right by Fred in the meeting room and just yeah. responds to get information from him. And he's he's a very hard worker. And uh, you know, he was a nickel in college, never really played stack behind the ball. And and you kind of guessing like, I wonder can he play behind the ball? And and uh, you know, I know he took the challenge on the practice squad last year of detailing, trying to play off the ball, learn his keys, his footwork, and and I've seen the, the growth in him uh, from last year season till now. You know, he's trying to play some Mike linebacker for us uh, on defense, running the show, and uh, the guy's he's, he's doing an outstanding job. How about the, the rookies that you brought in? Yeah, yeah, love the rookies, man. D winners, um, you know, has a lot of tangibles we look for in our linebackers. You know, he can run, got great speed, instinctive, and uh, he can find the ball. and. Uh, Jalen Graham is, you know, has length and can play in space, and and he he's he's remind me of a, you know, the size of a young Fred Warner. Uh, uh, he's very athletic, and I, I think those are really two that good pickups for him. There was talk that he was too tall to be big. Yeah, yeah. Right? Some, sometimes you know you say linebacker's too tall, but we like him with length. You yeah. know, that extra two inches of reach is a lot of two balls in space and. You know, a lot of wrap tackles that you can get your, you reach around them to tackle them and bring them down. So, you know, we like them long and can play with leverage and guys are smart. And, you know, those guys reach those criteria. It's going to be quite a competition this summer, isn't it? I mean, yeah, you get, yeah. you got three really good special teams players and you've got some phenomenal, some of the league's yeah. best linebackers uh, and some real young prospects that you just mentioned yeah. there all have talent. It's yeah, tough it's, uh, yes, it's great competition. That's what we have to go through OTAs and training camp and preseason uh, so we can sort out our team and see who's the best 53. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of competition at every position, but uh, definitely at linebacker, we got some great competition. TCU uh, Winters, I, we asked Winters if he was used as a blitzer. He said, really, didn't I wasn't a blitzer, yeah. but I mean, that just so when we're watching that national center and he's yeah. shooting gaps, yeah. he's getting in that backfield, he's bringing guys to the ground. He wasn't blitzing. No, he's just, that's just his film study and his knowledge. Huh? Yeah, and, that, and that's what we look for guys that can instinctively trigger, make plays behind the line of scrimmage, and you can see it and go go get it. And that's what I saw on tape with him that he made a lot of tackles for loss, like without being a blitzer. And you know, and Fred Warner, you know, Greenlaw, they they know how to trigger and make plays behind the line of scrimmage, and we don't blitz him. So that's what we look for in linebackers, guys, is instinctive that know when to pull the trigger.